Greetings from my world. What is up with y'all niggas, man? We back here in the Tale of Toronto, the crazy story of Loco City. Without further ado, like, comment, and subscribe, and let's jump right into it, nigga. Gang, gang. Reese made this. What's going on supporters? Before the video starts, I want to take a quick moment to thank everyone for 11,000 subscribers. The growth is unreal. I got some quality content in the works, so be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click on that notification bell so you don't miss an upload. All of the information provided in the following video is already public, therefore it will not be impeding on past, pending, or current cases. So sit back, relax, and as always, enjoy the video. Let's get it. Police department out there. Oh, so why are you hiding from cameras? <laughs> I heard someone from rehab, someone that just got released out of rehab is trying to go on his story and talk crazy about me. You know what I'm saying? First thing first. Oh, you guys keep sending me back. What are you talking about? I didn't have been home for six months. Who's that? Who's that? Fatal gun violence across Toronto. Two days marred by eight shootings, claiming four lives. CP24, my young and child score. Noah Tesfai, aka Loco City, is a Toronto born rap artist raised by the West Downtown neighborhood of St. James Town, specifically Bleecker Street. St. James Town is the largest high rise community in Canada and is home to politician Olivia Chow and actor Stephen James. In 2013, it became the host of the world's tallest mural, pending approval by Guinness World Records. Clearly, Bleecker has a rich history, however, it has also been identified as one of 13 economically deprived neighborhoods within the city. It has been the scene of many gang-related shootings over the past two decades, but more recently the notable block has been suffering from an opioid epidemic. A troubling, record-breaking day shedding light on a crisis within a crisis. Toronto Paramedic Services responded to 40 reports of possible overdoses between Friday and Saturday Overdose. morning. Three people died. That's the most suspected overdose calls within a 24-hour period since monitoring began back in 2017. Advocates say drugs are more potent, more available than ever, and the pandemic is making it increasingly difficult to save lives. Growing up in a clearly hostile environment with a number of horrible influences surrounding him, Loco City would make an attempt to steer himself on the right path by entering the studio at the age of 16. On October 19, 2015, Loco would release his first song on SoundCloud, titled Don't Freestyle, a remix of Bryson Tiller's breakout single, Don't. Don't play, don't play with it. Uh, this nigga. It was an instant hit. Fans were left asking for more. Unfortunately for them, Loco would only drop two more songs by 2017. With his unique melodies and airtight cadences, it was clear Loco had great potential, but when his consistency was questioned, Loco asserted he was in no rush to create a full body of work. I feel like each song I drop has a different meaning, he shared with Vice News author Shireen Taylor. I don't want to give all my music at one time. There has to be space, because literally each I mean, track I, I create it. is a different time of what I was going through. I he further it. elaborated by discussing the increasing pressure he faces as a rising artist. However, fast forward to May 7th. 2018, that pressure didn't seem to phase him in the slightest as he would release his breakout single CP24, a song named after Toronto's local news station. The song went viral and it didn't take long for Loco to catapult his way into the limelight, becoming the city's youngest and most popping new artist. Unfortunately, he wouldn't be able to savor the rewards for long, as just two months after the release of his breakout single, Loco would receive devastating news. 
20 what seconds was all it took for this to go from July a peaceful 1st, Canada day to a deadly public shooting. These videos obtained by CTV News investigates from the Ontario Superior Court show the moment Ibrahim Kiar squeezed a trigger, emptying his gun into a crowded street. And his target, 19-year-old Marcel Temi, died days later, devastating his family. Rest in 19, peace. it was a baby, my baby. Canada Day 2018. Loco City's childhood friend, Marcel Timmy, a.k.a. Congo, would be outside of a bar in Kensington Market when he was confronted by Ibrahim Kyer. Ibrahim was a 6'2", 220-pound narcotics dealer for the Dixon City Bloods, had previously served 14 years in prison and was on the run for first-degree murder. Ibrahim arrived to the bar with a few friends and partied within the vicinity of Congo with no issues whatsoever. However, as the day was coming to an end, the liquor started hitting and mood started changing. According to investigators, an inebriated Congo engaged in an argument with Ibrahim and one of his friends. The argument quickly escalated, leading to Congo punching Ibrahim's friend in the face. Ibrahim, who is described by lawyers as having a short fuse, then proceeded to ask Congo, Do you want smoke? Without hesitation, Ibrahim. No, that nigga crazy, bro. That nigga said, Do you want smoke? That nigga six foot two, 200 and something pounds. Yeah, you know that nigga a problem. You know that nigga a problem. You gotta take that nigga out. <laughs> you know that nigga a problem. Pulled out a handgun from his waistband and fired four shots at Congo. Congo fell and was lying on the ground when he was struck by another four shots, again, fired by Ibrahim. Those last four shots also ended up hitting three innocent people standing in the line of fire. Fortunately, they were not seriously Toronto injured. Notorious Ibrahim for then fled in a car, but crashed a short distance away. He managed to evade police for six months before they found him. In May of 2022, a jury convicted Ibrahim of manslaughter and three counts of aggravated assault. He has yet to be sentenced. Congo's family and friends were left mourning, especially Loco City. The days following his death, Congo was memorialized in his stomping grounds, bleaker, through a giant mural of himself. Friends and family also gathered to say their last goodbyes by releasing balloons in his honor. Loco City, however, immediately took to the studio as he found solace in his own songs. One month after the death of Congo, he released a single called Crazy, which paid homage to his fallen friend. The song went viral, along with his next two singles he would put out the following year. He even went further by collaborating with other artists in the city, which is rare in the Toronto music scene. The death of Congo clearly ignited something within Loco as the quality of his music and his work ethic developed virtually overnight. However, even with the dramatic rise in success, fame, and fortune, Loco was still living within the bleaker community, and the demons from his past would come back to You know, you know, I don't know why I'm thinking this, but Loco remind me of like a young Chief Keith, bro. I don't know why. I'm giving those type of vibes. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else is getting those vibes, bro. But he gave me like a young Chief Keith vibes, bro. Like, like I feel, I feel like he just started that whole music wave shit in Toronto, like Chief Keith did in uh, Chicago. Towards the end of 2019, Loco City would be arrested on a gun possession charge and subsequently placed on house arrest. This marked the beginning of Loco's lengthy legal troubles. Did you see the detective arrest? 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 Did you see the detective 2018. CCTV captured Loco City and a friend leaving the lobby of 200 Wellesley. With a history of unsolved murders and an alarming number of suicides, 200 Wellesley has been dubbed by locals as Toronto's most ominous address. Within 20 seconds of leaving the community housing building, Loco and his friend were both stopped by Toronto Police Constables Andrew Mason and Jason Bogue. In court, they both testified that they believed the young men were suspicious because they were quote unquote just standing there, prompting them to stop and search them. Oh, Constable bullshit. Bogue then claimed Loco City gave a false name, assaulted him, and later fled, prompting a foot chase after which a loaded Glock handgun was found discarded. 
Loco was very much known to police at this point, so they were able to track him back to his apartment with ease, prompting them to conduct a premise check authorized by the Trespass to Property Act. The ordeal was live streamed on Loco's Instagram. We're gonna try to be human about this, but if you're not gonna cooperate with us, what's the breach for? I'm telling you, you have to speak. Bro, I hate cops who like, I hate cops who just take their job, just, I mean, obviously their job is serious, but I hate those fucking dickhead cops, bro. I fucking hate those type of niggas, bro. Like, bro, it's not that fucking... Like, they'll be they'll be overreacting on some stupid shit. Like, bro, they think they really in power. Like, they really got all this motherfucking power, bro. Without that badge, what are you, nigga? Like, I hate cops who just fucking do that stupid shit. Just dickheads for no reason. Are you guys seeing this shit right now? That's bullshit, bro. Sit down here. I don't know. Sit down. You guys are here. 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 What are you talking about? I didn't do shit. I've been home for six months. What did I do wrong? Bro, I've been at home for six months when I came out of jail. I have a full ankle brace. I don't know. So what the fuck? Man. Loco was released on bail shortly after the incident, but once the case made its way to trial and all the evidence was reviewed, it was found that the constables were lying. Ontario Court Justice oh, Lori sure Thomas found there was no reasonable cause to stop Loco and his friend in the first place, and when they were unlawfully searched, Loco did not escalate the situation, nor did he get physical with the officer. This was confirmed by reviewing security footage at Bitch 200 Wellesley. Court Justice Thomas went on record saying, the officers showed blatant disregard for Loco City's charter rights and their own duties, and there was also no assault or attempted assault on the officers. I find that race, along with age and gender, played a role in the officers' notion that Loco City and his friend were potential offenders, oh, whether sure. trespassing or criminally. I further find that race was part of the motivation to investigate and detain the men. As such, Loco City and his friend were racially profiled when the officers approached them for a groundless TPA violation. She also found the officers failed to give Loco City his rights to counsel in a timely manner, violating another constitutional guarantee. Loco was subsequently acquitted of all charges. With 2018 being a year full of highs and lows, Loco entered the next year as a man on a mission. At the end of January, he released his single, Job Done, which broke a million views with ease. One month later, he dropped Never Know, a song that touches upon the harsh realities of growing up in Bleecker. It was another showcase of Loco City's exceptional melodic capabilities and compelling lyricism. Then when the Toronto Raptors won the NBA championship later in June, he released his highly anticipated eight-track debut album titled, Save Yourself. With the release of the album, Loco took the next steps as a rising artist and went on a promo run, and for the first time in his career, he yeah, began- Yeah, bro, that nigga, that nigga giving me big, like, Chief Keith vibes, King Vaughn vibes, Lil Durk, like all the Chicago niggas. I don't know why, bro. Forming at sold-out shows across Canada. All the Chicago niggas. <laughs> Listen, I've been crazy. telling a lot of cats when they ask me when cats from like the other side of the border They ask me who's popping in the city. Your name tends to come up a lot out of my mouth my guy I really rock with you in the studio with us right now is the boy Loco City 2019 was clearly a monumental year for Loco and there were high hopes for the same energy to be carried into 2020 But as we all know the pandemic hit and the world essentially shut down Toronto especially, was hit the hardest as the city went through one of the longest lockdowns on record. Loco was one of many artists impacted by the pandemic as he would release just one song that year. However, throughout 2020, rumors began swirling indicating Loco had entered into Cam H, a rehab center for those experiencing addiction and mental health issues. Loco and his mm, team went good. ghost for several months, refusing to address any of the speculation until Loco himself made a rare appearance on an Instagram live stream with Toronto rapper Top 5, who is currently awaiting trial for first degree murder. During the live, Loco's behavior was erratic, to say the least. Loco, are you hiding from Cam H, man? Yo, looks, looks. Yo, look. Yo, what's going on, bro, bro? 
Ngatak. Ngatak. Man, I got no ask the question and then I'm What are you saying, though? Oh, yeah, I, hear, I heard you're not stop it. That's what you're doing today. <laughs> yeah, I'm out here, man. No, I, don't, like I, don't, I, don't, I don't claim that as mine. I mean, I won't lie to you. You know what I mean? You told Flipper Joe you're after Sluggy. Nah, I'm telling my dog, though. I'm Flipper, though. <laughs> <laughs> my G, my G. My name is Cam H. My Come to our yeah. side, man. You're going to go blow, my name. No, I'm going to get my name, nigga. I'm out here. I got a GGG chain for you, man. I got a GGG chain for you, man. Come, come holler at me, bro, bro. No way, Daddy. I eat your shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to holler at you. You a fool? What? You know what I'm saying? Bye-bye. Yo, 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 broski, if you're at least going to be turned smoke on that sluggy, well, I'll keep you relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> These niggas is Hold crazy, dog. Yo, look, I'm hollering him, man. Oh, fuck. Yo, I'm a holly. I'm gonna holler you. Look, I'm gonna holler you. Yo, loco. Loco. I'm gonna holler you, bro. We're at 3,000 yeah. views. I'm gonna... Yo, loco. Why you moving like that, fam? My woman. Why, why you moving so gut, fam? What are you talking about? <laughs> bro, that nigga sound you hard are as hell. Goat. You are thing. a goat. Despite the alarming behavior, Loco provided fans with a message reassuring them he had big moves on the way for 2021. Although Loco kept an optimistic perspective, he would not be prepared for what would unfold at the start of the new year. Damn, what happened? Thank you for joining us. I'm Tracy Tong. A double shooting turned deadly in Toronto tonight. It happened in a laneway in the Young and Summer Hill area. Emergency crews arrived on scene. They found two victims, a man who was pronounced dead on scene, as well as a woman who had life-threatening injuries. She has been taken to hospital. A nigga died? Currently being treated for those injuries. January 29th, 2021. Loco City's childhood friends Sirak Tesfe, a.k.a. Hammer, and Hennig Mesgina, a.k.a. Henny, would be at a midtown condo by Young Street and Summer Hill Avenue hanging out alongside Hammer's girlfriend, Jacqueline. Less than a week prior to meeting up, both men were spotted in a music video released by Loco City. In the song, Loco describes his friends as young rich men who are not to be played with. On the day of the meetup, Nothing was unusual between Henny and Hammer as they were hanging out in the condo for a while before they stepped out along with Jacqueline. It is said the group walked towards the laneway of the condo, right by Summerhill Station, and congregated there for some time. Several minutes would go by before bullets would start flying. Both Hammer and Jacqueline were hit several times. Hammer died at the scene while Jacqueline survived, okay, but she okay. was left in critical condition and bedridden in the hospital for two months. During peace. that time, she started a now-closed GoFundMe, detailing what she had experienced. She wrote, Seeing my boyfriend murdered two feet away from me is something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I can never unsee that, and then on top of that, I got shot nine times after. I almost died. Yeah, Jacqueline cent. was discharged from hospital after two months, and it was then when Toronto police informed the public that Henny and another man associated with Bleeker was arrested in relation to the murder of Hammer and the attempted murder of Jacqueline. Reports indicate Henny had not only shot Hammer, but he also robbed him of his cell phone and condo keys. He then stole several items out of his condo and fled in his own vehicle. Henny is incarcerated and awaiting trial. The motive for the slaying is still unknown. With the loss of now two of his childhood friends, both of which experiencing horrific deaths, this would undoubtedly take a toll on Loco. He stopped putting out music and all activity on his social media halted immediately after the death of Hammer. Yeah, Several nigga, months nigga would go down. by with no word from the bleaker native. Like what's crazy is when you lose a, uh, like a close friend, a family member, all that shit go out the window. All that social media shit, all that shit you used to do, it go out the motherfucking window, bro. It goes out the window. Like 100% facts, bro. Social media, all that. You not on social media after that. Nah. You get at least a good shit, five, six, maybe even a year, nigga. But like, nigga, all that, all that social media shit out the window, especially when you lose two of your best friends, <laughs> nigga, you was not on the internet. Until one deadly night in October when news broke of a series of shootings in the downtown core. 
A road, a plaza, an apartment, and a taxi. The settings are different, but the stories are the same. The scenes Four, of nigga. fatal gun violence across Toronto. Two days marred Time. by eight shootings, Damn. claiming four lives. Weekend's bloodshed started early Saturday morning. At 12.36 a.m., 28-year-old Kamal Daly was killed at a plaza at Jane and Yorkwood's gate. At 2.20 a.m., 36-year-old Donald DeRoy Smokey Marson was shot dead in an Eglinton and Keel apartment. At 3.42 p.m., a man was killed outside a Highway 401 in Weston Plaza. At 3 a.m. Sunday, a 17-year-old was shot in a drive-by on Highway 427. Two hours later, a woman walked into a hospital with gunshot wounds. At a quarter to 8 a.m., a man was shot at an Eglinton in Oakwood God restaurant. Damn. At 8.22 p.m., a man was shot multiple times at Parliament and Wellesley, and at 5 after 9 p.m., a man was killed in his... All them goddamn, bro, Toronto is... Bro, Toronto is crazy, my nigga. This just a war zone. It's, it's, it's a fucking war zone, bro. You got niggas coming in and out the fucking hospital, bodies dropping everywhere. Nigga, Toronto is a war zone, my nigga. But pharmacy and Eglinton. The trenches. October 23rd, 2021. In a span of a weekend, Toronto saw eight separate shootings. The seventh happened near Parliament Street and Wellesley Street East just after 8 p.m. When officers arrived at the scene, they located a male victim with several gunshot wounds. It was Loco City. He was rushed to a trauma center in serious condition. Damn. Fortunately, he made a full recovery, but when investigators found a firearm That's and good. several shell casings at the scene, Loco City was charged with several firearms offenses. He was sentenced to two years at the Toronto South Detention Center and two years of probation once he is released. Mm, so he locked up right now. He's next month. Locals arresting officer Jason Bog Boag was charged with impaired driving this month. Okay. But yeah, man, that's gonna be the end of this video, man. He has been suspended with pay. But yeah, that's been the end of this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, local city. Yeah, man, that 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 shit was crazy. That nigga story was crazy as hell, bro. But in the comment section, let me know. Let me know what y'all want me to react to next. Content, more content dropping soon. All that shit. And I'll see y'all boys in the next one. Peace.